on? This is the Buckethead Disciple. <laughs> Fun fact for you, a recent sample of Buckethead fans indicated that at least for those who were willing to choose, 60% usually prefer the Pike series to the non-Pike solo work. I think that the sheer number of Pikes makes it possible to reach a larger audience with more specific tastes, which would explain the higher percentage. However, many claim that the Pike series consists of mindless soloing backed with monotonous chords or just plain boring, undeviating guitar with no other instruments. To be honest, there are several cases where that could be true, but not in all of them. If you feel a little iffy towards the Pike series or are just unfamiliar in general, then here are some more musically adept songs in Buckethead's Pike series that may help you appreciate Buckethead Pikes a bit more. The first one I'd like to discuss is Pike 88, Red Pepper Restaurant. The song Level 4 is a pretty chill jam, until you get to a surprising key change most of the way through the song. Key changes are not typical for Buckethead, but I think that it is a great demonstration of his musicality and skill. Next, I would like to talk about hybrid picking, otherwise known as chicken picking. Hybrid picking is basically picking a lower string with the guitar pick, typically the big E string, while the other fingers pluck the higher strings at the same time. If you do it right, to untrained ears, it sounds like two guitars are playing at once. Guitarists famous for this style of picking are Chet Atkins, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and Mark Knopfler. Buckethead excels in common and uncommon forms of chicken picking and does a phenomenal job in the song Vehicle Of. Next, Buckethead isn't known for writing any songs with super interesting time signatures. Most of them are in 4-4, but something that Buckethead excels at is changing tempo several times in one song. Tempo is the pace or speed by which a section of music is played, or what most people refer to as beats per minute. What is really difficult is changing the tempo while maintaining the same time signature. Lots of scronkier pikes do this, but a good pike that has frequent time signature changes and changes tempo throughout the songs is Pike 82, Calamity Cabin. I would recommend the songs Hollow Door and the namesake Calamity Cabin. Now I need to tell you about something called ekphrasis. Ekphrasis, in a nutshell, is expressing a form of art that is different from its original form. The English poet John Keats is famous for his poem, Ode on a Grecian Urn, which is ekphrasis of the ancient Grecian pottery, common in the year 700 to 400 BCE. The Instagram account BucketBot is super famous for his poetic ekphrasis of buckethead pikes, and I suggest you check him out to learn more about what ekphrasis looks like. Ekphrasis is different from illusion in that illusion simply refers to or mentions another work of art, while ekphrasis is a reinterpretation of that same work of art, just in a different medium. Taylor Swift alludes to Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet in her song Love Story, but the song isn't a reinterpretation of the story. However, Buckethead's Pike 36, The Pit, is ekphrastic of Edgar Allan Poe's The Pit and the Pendulum. Throughout the pike, you can hear Buckethead's interpretation of the undulations of the deadly pendulum that swings overhead the unfortunate victim of the pit. Midway through the pike, there is uptight, intense riffage, representing the pendulum getting closer and closer to the victim, the rats gnawing through his leather straps, then the walls closing in on him afterwards. Then the final song is a serene conclusion to the story, when the victim is rescued. All in all, this pike's ekphrasis is second to none. Lastly, remember that Buckethead basically memorized Nicholas Leninsky's Thesaurus of Scales and Melodic Patterns, yet the guy still comes up with clever ways to express himself through his music in ways hardly anyone has thought of. 
Something that consistently impresses me with Buckethead's music is his ability to combine two separate genres that you wouldn't normally put together. The song Branch on Pike 252's Bozo in the Labyrinth is a perfect example. Who would think to combine acoustic guitar with pop funk? Something is a brewin' in Buckethead land. But until things start churning out again, I'm leaving the link to music.bucketheadpikes.com in the description. I think it's high time for some more delicious pikes to surface. Any predictions as to when a new one will come out? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Music